Hi, um, so this is the lesson that we're going to be learning about for, uh, and this is a skeletal system. Uh, so we just got done with integument, so now we're going to go right, well, we skip muscles and we're going to go into um, your bones. Um, so we're going to start microscopically and then work our way out. So uh, when we take a bone, uh, to imagine we take the femur and we cracked it in half. Um, when you look along the outside in the microscope, you're going to see more compact bone. And I'll kind of put the diagram that I gave you guys. So number two here, uh, this is compact bone. Uh, it's so compact it actually makes these round spiral shapes. Uh, and this here with all the holes, this is spongy bone. Those have a lot of space in between. And then going throughout, um, you will see uh, your artery, vein, and your nerve. <clears throat> and these are moving through uh, these canals, um, which are called herversion canals um, and uh, perforating canals, which we'll get to in a second. So this is what you would see here. If we took this little spot right here and zoomed in even more, that's where you would see the structures down in here. And this is what we're going to start with, with the identifi identification first. So we're going to start with the cell. Osteo means bones. Sites mean cells. So osteocytes are mature bone cells. So inside of the bone, they don't just lie by themselves. They're inside these little teeny chambers called lacunas. You might remember me telling you guys to label that on your uh, Google Slides. So now we're getting to it. So these little pockets called lacunas, and inside of the pocket you will see little um, cells called osteocytes. And then all these cells are communicating with each other um, and exchanging uh, nutrients and transporting things to each other through things called caniculi. So osteocytes sit in these little pockets, the little chambers called lacunas, and they're all connected through something called the caniculi. So um, in your diagram, so here's a couple little diagrams. So this one here, so this here would be your lacuna the osteocytes, the blue in the middle, and then they're all connected by caniculi, and these are all different canals, and what happens is cells communicate with one another. Another diagram to see, um, just so you can see in different ones, the osteocyte would be the blue, um, the lacuna is the pocket, and they're connected through caniculi, and here's your diagram. So you had 9, 10, and I don't, I added an 11 on the other one, but forgot what this one, so this is 11 here. So 10 is your osteocyte, um, 9 was your caniculi, and 11, which is not which is the whole thing I was trying to picture, um, and that is your lacuna. So please label those now. Okay, so that, now that we're zoomed in, we're going to zoom out, um, and when we zoom out, we're going to start with compact bone, because spongy bone we don't have to label as much, uh, there's a lot of space, so we're going to go into the compact bone. So uh, what you just saw, you saw all these spiral shapes, The each spiral shape made up of all the cells are called osteons um, and they're really cemented together and they create all these multiple patterns and when I get back to the diagram I'll show you that. Um, down the center of your osteon, um, so this will be vertical down the center, You'll there's all these blood vessels and nerves. The hole itself is called a haversion canal. So just like a canal which is kind of like a passageway, um, that's what the haversion canal is and it's purpose or its function is to carry the blood vessels. It's out of your way so you can see. Um, the Volkmann's canal is going horizontal so the horizontal perforating canals are called Volkmann's canal. Okay so I'll show you what it looks like in the picture. So we're only talking about compact bone. So number two is all the compact bone. This right here is just like you took one of these spirals and pulled it out just so you can see it and this is called number three is the osteon. Um, the going down the center, so in the center you see the blood, the nerve vein, or the nerve, the artery and vein, um, these are your herversion canal. So herversion canal, herversion canal, herversion canal, herversion canal. Um, and this diagram number five is your herversion canal. And the perforating Volkmann's canal would be number six. So those are going to be more horizontal. So they kind of connect all your herversion canals. Um, number four is periosteum. I'll Type, I'll write that out for you guys tomorrow, but pretty much on the outside of your uh, bone, you can peel it off. Um, seven um, is your um, artery and vein, eight is your nerve, um, and one was your spongy bone. And tomorrow in class, I'll write all these on the board. Okay, so spongy bone, uh, there's no pattern, so you're not going to have an osteon. Um, you don't need a herversion canal and caniculi in the body because it just goes through the holes of the sponge. So um, it's usually attached to the compact bone. 
So, but you still, of course, you still have your cells, your lacuna caniculi because it's zoomed in, but you don't have the other structures that are in the spiral. Okay, so here's what it kind of looks like. So this would be all your spongy bone here, and it'd be in here surrounded by your compact. This would be your femur. So it's big, big bone in your leg, largest bone in the body. Um, if you took um, a bone and you cracked it in half, and you'll see this in the chicken wing dissection, um, you'll see something called bone marrow. Get this out of your way so you can see it. Um, near the ends is your red marrow, and in the very center is your yellow marrow. And what they do is they produce blood cells. We'll learn more about it in Unit 5, um, exactly what they produce, what's the difference. But for now, just know that it produces blood cells. Um, you have your red marrow here and your yellow marrow in the middle. Just know the difference between those. But you just see and know that there's bone marrow in the center and that what they produce. Okay, so you have um, bones grow, um, for instance, as an embryo to a young adult all the way to your fully grown. Uh, girls finish growing around 15, 16, and males finish growing around anywhere between 22 and 24, depending on genetics. Um, so as they're growing, it's something called osteoblasts. Um, there's these growth plates, and they start off as cartilage, and the bone um, essentially starts growing longer and longer, and the bone itself that actually produces more bone is called osteoblasts. Blast means to um, create. So these are bone forming cells and eventually they'll turn into osteocytes and then you'll see those they'll be and they'll be pocketed inside of the um the lacunas. On the opposite end of that, and I'll pull this down, you have something called osteoclasts. Osteo bone class means to destroy. These are giant bone destroying cells. They break down the bone and they release um, in the calcium. If this happens, it's probably not a good thing. Um, you probably have a low amount of calcium in your blood, and your body is going to is going towards destroying your bone to pull the calcium out of that, which is not good. So for homeostasis, when your calcium levels drop below homeostatic level, um, and we'll learn more about the parathyroid gland later, but that's its job is to maintain um, calcium levels in the body. Um, so what it will do, it will release a hormone called the PTH hormone, and your um, osteoclast will start destroying the bone and putting it into your bloodstream. And that's where you'll have a lot of bone breaks. Um, older people are usually deficient in calcium, and that's why they'll fall and break a hip, for instance, because uh, they don't have enough calcium in their, in their compact bone turns into spongy bone. So instead of having all that compact bone, that tight, those tight osteons, there's just all those pockets of space. Um, this is what kind of looks like. This is osteoporosis. So a healthy bone here would be the compact on the outside. And then you can see with the osteoporosis how it took and it became more spongy. And that's because the osteoclasts destroyed it, right? It broke it up. It took the compact bone and made it into spongy bone. Okay, so um, when you're looking at bones, you'll notice they all have different shapes and sizes. You have a long bone, which is longer than it is wide, um, a short bone, um, irregular kind of doesn't fit in any category, um, so it just becomes irregular. Those are usually your vertebrae, and flat bone, it looks flat. So again, long bone is longer than wide. That would be like your um, humerus, uh, radius ulna, or your uh, femur, tibia, fibula. Um, short bone would be like um, carpals or um, metacarpals, um, or I'm sorry, just carpals, those are your wrist bones, and tarsals, which would be your ankle bones. Um, the seismoid bones are like your patella, which is your kneecap. Flat bones, uh, your sternum, uh, your rib cages are good examples of that, um, your scapula. Any irregular bones, they really don't fit anywhere else, part of your hip bones and your vertebrae. Uh, they kind of have their own odd shape to them. Um, here's another example. So you can see the flat bone, the irregular, short, um, are normally going to be the cuneiforms, which are a part of the carpals and tarsals, the patella, which is the seismoid bone, and the long bone, which is a femur. It's a good example. Pretty much anything in the legs and the arms. When you look at bones, you're also going to see like certain markings that um, give you identifications, um, projections, or anytime anything is sticking out of the bone. So that would be this part right here. So it sticks out of the bone. Depressions are like these, anything that, parts that are openings or indentions. So anytime you see like all these little um, indentions where your eye sockets could, should go, usually they're like areas in which organs go in. Um, here's a huge one here, and that's where your brain goes. It's a huge depression. Okay. 
So this are, these here um, are where muscles and ligaments, so they stick out so that muscle and ligaments can attach. So tuberosity is the first one. Um, it's a rounded projection. Um, a good example of that would be um, in the femur, the round the, the rounded part that comes out. Um, a tubercle is very, very small. Um, it's usually on the opposite end. So you usually have a tuberosity on one side, it's very large, and you have a tiny little tubercle on the other. And what those are for is muscles come around and they wrap around it so that they don't rip when your muscle contracts. Um, crests are narrow, prominent uh, ridges. That would be like your, um, like your um, pelvic bones. Um, a process is anything else. So those would be like your, your vertebrae. So they're like odd things that stick out. And then we'll have during our circuit, I'll show you all these. So uh, here's project, here's a good idea for or a good um, example for tuberosity, just round, large and round. So this is round. And then just imagine um, muscles coming and wrapping around this so that they don't rip from the bone. A tubercle is very tiny, so it's this right here, so so small, like it's a little rounded part right here that sticks out, and then again, mus like the muscle will come in um, in the tubercle and wrap around it. So tuberosity is large, tubercle is small. The crest, which is right here, so this would be part of your um, pelvic girdle, and it's there, it's just a round crest, and then again, your muscles wrap around that. And the process, so your vertebrae is the best example, it's any shape prominence that sticks out. Um, bony projection, so you have your head, so this is where it would go. So usually your head um, is a bony expansion carried by a narrow neck. Your femur is the best example of this. Um, a facet would be at the opposite end, um, and it's a smooth, nearly flat surface. So uh, pretty much these are all attachments that are supposed to go into another structure. So this would go into your pelvic region, and this would attach to the tibia and fibula. This is your femur, which is your thigh bone. Um, so depressions and openings, you have foramen, those are round openings, so um, foramens would be like right here, so this is where your spine comes in and attaches. Um, fossa or shallow baseline depressions um, in the bones, so just when you're looking you would see like a little dent, and a sinus is filled with um, mucus or um, or fluid. So here you can see, so all your sinus is like in your face when you say my, like let's say you had a sinus infection, essentially the mucus here has built up um, due to the fact that you have some sort of infection in that region. Okay, um, and the last part we're going to go into is skeletal organization. So we're, the main thing is you need to know which bones are axial and which ones are appendicular. So axial, and that's what I'm going to go over now. Um, so axial will be the skull, um, the sternum and the rib cage, and then all the vertebrae. So axial is like down the axis. Um, appendicular would be the scapula, um, the clavicle, all the arm bones, the pelvic girdle, and the legs. So you can kind of see blue is identifying the structure in this picture. Um, bones um, have uh, give shape to your body. That's like the function of it. Um, you have lower limbs and you have vertebrae column, and they're supposed to support your weight. Um, the bones of the um, skull protect your eyes, the bones of the thoracic cavity, so pretty much your bones are there to protect something inside. So either they're protecting your brain, your heart and lungs, or um, your um, abdominal and reproductive organs. You have 206 bones, um, they're flat. Um, so axial again in this picture would be blue, um, and pink um, is your appendicular. Uh, the skull is composed of eight cranial bones and 14 facial. And then you have your vertebral column, and I'll go more into this, but you have your cervical, which is your neck, thoracic, which is your upper back, lumbar is the curve of your lower, and then you have the sacrum and the cossacks, which is your tailbone. Um, so your thoracic cage, you have 24 ribs, uh, you have seven true ribs, and eight, nine, and ten are false ribs, and you have these floating ribs, which are on the back. Um, for your appendicular, you have the pectoral girdle, again, that includes the clavicle, sternum, and the arms. Um, and then that also includes the radius ulna and the carpals, metacarpals, and phalanges. And the pelvic girdle, of course. So your pelvic girdle is attached. And then all the um, bones of the lower limb, so femur, patella, tibia, fibula, and the metatarsal, tarsals, and phalanges. Okay, awesome. I made it in 15 minutes. Otherwise, it kicks me out. Um, for the bones, if you're worried, don't. Um, you'll have some time. To, you're going to use an app and identify them all. Okay, thank you.